This is Francis. She's standing on... Wait a minute. Is that an empty space suit? I can't tell if there's a person in there. She can't be hiding in the torso area like a turtle, can she? Well, under her feet is the minor planet Didymos. Didymos is a potentially hazardous asteroid, which means it may eventually collide with the Earth. Fran here <clears throat> is equipped with a next-gen Artemis EVA suit. So unlike Fred, who's sheltering in the Starship airlock, she can survive the unforgiving environment of space. In the background, you can see NASA's target for the upcoming mission, Didymos's moonlet, Dimorphos. In the Greek language, Didymos means twin or double, and Dimorphos means having two forms. Before Dimorphos got its own name, it was referred to as Didymos B, with the main asteroid Didymos being Didymos A. For fun, sometimes the pair was even called Diddy Main and Diddy Moon. Dimorphos is one of the smallest astronomical objects to receive a permanent name, measuring about 160 meters across. Didymos, the primary of this binary asteroid system, is much larger than Dimorphos at 780 meters in length. NASA's unprecedented mission to alter the course of Dimorphos has a clever name, of course. It's called DART. Aside from representing the action of humanity throwing a dart at an asteroid, the name is also an acronym for Double Asteroid Redirection Test. Because we're sending a spacecraft to a double asteroid system and testing our ability to redirect one of them so that we know we'll be able to do so when we have to save the human race from catastrophe in the future. Astrophysicists have been warning us for a long time that our planet is orbiting the sun in a shooting gallery. We're fairly certain that Chicxulub, an asteroid the size of Mount Everest, crashed into Mexico 66 million years ago, causing a mass extinction event, wiping out the dinosaurs and most of the life on planet Earth. Earth continues to be hit by asteroids and pieces of asteroids quite regularly. Currently, in our solar system, there are over 20,000 known near-Earth asteroids, but only around 5,000 of them are considered potentially hazardous. To be considered a threat, an asteroid has to be larger than 100 meters, and its orbit has to come very close to or directly cross the Earth's orbit. This is a simulation of what it looks like when the asteroid 2019 OK had a close encounter with the Earth. OK, OK. Many of our solar system's asteroids don't pose a threat to us because they live in the asteroid belt and for all intents and purposes, never leave the very large area between Mars and Jupiter. But the Didymos system's 771-day elliptical orbit does take it at its closest point to the Sun, right around where Earth's orbit is. As far as we know, Didymos and Dimorphos won't have a dangerous encounter with the Earth anytime soon. But one of the reasons it was chosen for the DART mission is that it does get close enough to reach relatively easily with a spacecraft. The other, and perhaps more crucial reason, is that Dimorphos is a small asteroid moon in orbit around a larger asteroid. By targeting the moonlet of a double asteroid system, we will be able to measure any slight change in Dimorphos's orbit around Didymos, as opposed to the nearly impossible task of measuring a minute change in the trajectory of a single large asteroid orbiting the Sun. DART is scheduled to launch from California on a SpaceX Falcon 9 in July of 2021. After separation from the launch vehicle and over a year of cruising, DART will intercept Didymos' moonlet in September of 2022. At this point, the Didymos system will be less than 11 million kilometers from Earth, which is close enough for ground-based telescopes to observe the change in velocity that the DART impactor will apply to Dimorphos. SpaceX's role in all of this is to lift DART into orbit and on its way. But after the Falcon 9's upper stage deploys the unmanned spacecraft, DART will have to rely on its own propulsion. It will be equipped with hydrazine thrusters, but for the bulk of the journey, DART will utilize an electric propulsion system called Next C. Yes, just like in Star Wars, DART will have an ion drive. This image isn't a concept render. It's an actual photograph of the Next C engine firing in a vacuum chamber during testing. 
it combines xenon propellant and electricity to accelerate positive ions out of the engine at speeds of around 40 kilometers per second, or 90,000 miles per hour. This generates very little thrust, but it can be fired for very long periods of time, and that thrust adds up. This engine has been seriously tested for long-duration firings as well, with one test lasting 48,000 hours. That's five and a half years of continuous operation. Another test lasted eight years, demonstrating more than 918 kilograms of xenon throughput during 51,000 hours of operation. They could have even kept this test going, but the engine was turned off in 2015 so that it could be inspected after firing for so long. The test was a huge success, with the engine greatly exceeding its design goals. To feed Next-C the kilowatts of electricity it needs, DART will utilize a powerful solar panel system that deploys from a very small package called ROSA, or Rollout Solar Array. Just so happens that's very similar to my actual last name. NASA tested ROSA in vacuum chambers on Earth several years ago, but wanted real proof that the technology would work in space. So in 2017, they sent a unit to the ISS on a SpaceX Dragon cargo vessel. After observing the panel for one week, while it was exposed to extreme temperature swings caused by the space station's orbit around the Earth, the test was declared a success. But due to a stowage issue, it had to be jettisoned from the station and it subsequently burned up in the atmosphere. That's okay though, because the two ROSA power units on the DART spacecraft will not ever need to be stowed, and once deployed, they can remain rolled out for the entire mission, including impact. DART's impact into Dimorphos will be an attempt to channel as much energy directly into the center of the asteroid as possible. One potential issue is that it's hard for us to tell how loosely packed the solid matter of an asteroid may be. Switching over very quickly to the OSIRIS-REx mission which has been in the news recently because of its sample collection on the asteroid Bennu, its collection arm is reported to have inadvertently penetrated deep into the asteroid instead of just kissing the surface of Bennu as planned. OSIRIS-REx wasn't an impactor, so it survived its dip into Bennu, and it was able to send photographs back showing what had happened. The DART impactor will certainly be destroyed on the other hand when it crashes into Dimorphos at around 20,000 kilometers per hour, or 6 kilometers per second. So, in an act of international collaboration, Italy has provided a CubeSat named Alicia, which you can pretty much think of as DART's Instagram husband. <laughs> DART will carry Lycia to the Didymos system, and when DART approaches its target, Lycia will be released so that it can perform a flyby to assess the impact and resulting course correction of Dimorphos, or lack thereof. Lycia will be able to tell us a lot by sending images of the ejecta plume back to Earth for analysis. The word ejecta refers to all of the asteroid matter that gets splashed away from the impact site. By looking at the mass and particle size of the ejecta, scientists will be able to measure the efficacy of the strike, determining how much of the kinetic energy from the impact will affect Dimorphos' trajectory, and how much was essentially wasted by breaking up Dimorphos' surface. Lycia will also give us images showing the size and shape of the impact crater, plus some potentially interesting images of the opposite hemisphere of Dimorphos. The DART impactor has its own imaging system as well called Draco. This isn't SpaceX's Dragon nomenclature. This Draco stands for Didymos Reconnaissance and Asteroid Camera for OPNAV. It's based on the LORI high-resolution imager from the New Horizons mission we sent to Pluto and beyond in 2006. Unlike Lycia's imaging system, which is meant to send images back to Earth after impact, Draco's purpose is to allow DART to see the Didymos system, differentiate between Didymos and Dimorphos, and aim itself so that it impacts Dimorphos at just the right spot. DART needs a direct hit on Dimorphos' center of mass. If DART impacts Dimorphos off to the side, or at a bad angle, some of its energy may be wasted altering Dimorphos' spin instead of its orbital trajectory. If all goes as planned, DART will hammer Dimorphos squarely, 
slamming 558 kilograms of mass into the nearly 5 billion kilogram asteroid, causing Dimorphos' orbit around Didymos to tighten up as shown in this graphic, proving that we can use such a system to prevent an apocalypse if needed. In order to visualize what it will take to redirect a large asteroid hurtling towards Earth, NASA has created an app that does all of the math instantly. There's a link in the description if you want to play around with it. You can specify a redirect by Delta V, and you can even program the app to calculate a redirect by using a number of Atlas V launches, or even Falcon Heavy launches. 10 Falcon Heavy launches wouldn't be enough to redirect a 500 meter asteroid when launched with these parameters. Since I'm a huge Starship fan, I decided to simulate what it would look like for a cargo Starship to arrive at the Didymos system. This is pure science fiction for now, but I think one day in the future, the Starship launch system will be our best bet to redirect asteroids because of its planned ability to launch many tons very quickly. To show what it would look like in real time, let's start 13 kilometers away from Dimorphos. We have to start this far away to show what 6 kilometers per second of speed would look like. Otherwise, it would just be a flash on the screen. Now let's do it one more time in slow motion. Let's just say hypothetically, the Starship's total mass, including kinetic impactor, is around 200 tons, which would be almost 400 times the amount of mass DART will impact Dimorphos with. This might be enough to completely break up Dimorphos into smaller pieces. Here's some photos of the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory team assembling the actual DART spacecraft. I'm super excited to see this sweet piece of humanity-saving tech in action. If you're looking forward to watching the DART mission in 2021 and to seeing how the impact goes in 2022, let us know in the comments. And big thanks to Patreon supporters. Thank you so much. I wouldn't be able to do this without you. And thanks to Eric X, who I've been working on animations with recently, and Elon Musk just retweeted our Starship full flight animation. Most of this was Eric X's vision. He's a genius. And now newspaper articles are writing about it. So I'm super happy to be involved with it. And we're going to think about what we're going to do next. So if you have ideas, leave it in the comments. We've been talking about habitats or Mars designs. So let us know what you think. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. And open your mind and reach for the stars.